hey, if you've ever brought in an SVG and put it on a curved surface with an extrude or done an intricate design that's meant to match a curved surface, if you're using extrude, you might be missing out. Let's talk about the emboss command. The emboss command can be found under create emboss. And what this is going to do is it's going to wrap a sketch onto a round or curved surface. And it's going to do a few other things behind the scenes as well. The basics are you select all of your sketch entities in this sketch profiles dialog, and then you select the face, which in this case is this round face. And then you decide if it's adding or removing material. So if I choose the deboss and click OK, it's going to cut this material away. And we also have some other options in the dialog. We have the ability to adjust where it sits after the fact. So I can set it a little lower off to the left or right. So I'm going to put in two. It's going to drop it two. And I ac actually have these arrows where I can drag this down to sort of match the bottom edge or bottom face. And it's going to solve this for us. Now, some important things to know about the emboss is that if you change the sketch, let's go back to our sketch. And if I were to delete this character, finish the sketch, does the emboss update? Absolutely. So it is parametric. It will resolve based on adjustments that you make to your sketch. Now, the huge question is, if we go back before we created this emboss and we look at this sketch that I brought in from an SVG, and I want to put this on the cylinder. The way that I have this aligned is it's actually extending past the cylinder. So if I were to extrude this, the D will not terminate or hit the object. And this is the huge difference between emboss and an extrude up to a surface. Let's look at it a little bit closer. Let's start a new emboss. I'll select all the sketch entities. I'll then select the face. And now it's creating this. This is wrapping our sketch design to match this. Think about a balloon against a rubber stamp where it's being pressed up against and conforming. This is effectively changing our sketch to align to this. Not only that, if we create this extrude, if we were to look at these surface faces, these are going to be aligned as if we did a surface offset. Let's try that now. If we offset this surface by two millimeters, this surface body is showing exactly how it behaves. When we look from the top view, you can see that all of our letters have this rounded effect. And the same thing happens if we were to do a cut instead of an emboss. It's going to cut it away. Inside these letters, it's all the same rounded effect inside as well. Now, what if you wanted to create a design like this? Now, for some reason, I just, my brain, I always go to this place of, oh, I should do this complex shape and try to mimic this. No, <laughs> no, no, no. Let's just do a cylinder. We'll extrude it going up. I'm not going to worry about dimensions just yet. I'm going to create a sketch off in space. I'll use the offset plane, put it off in space select the plane, go to create sketch. And now I'm going to do a couple circles. Looks great. Now I'm not going to extrude this, but instead I'm going to use the emboss against this face. to add the material. And now I'm going to use a circular pattern. The feature is the emboss. The axis is this cylinder. And I want to do a bunch of these and I'll optimize them once I get it where I want it. Looks good. Great. Now I have this cool design but I have this solid. All I have to do is trim this away. I'm going to just use E for extrude and it's going to match that same shape. I'll cut it out and there we go. Hey, so I've created a series of cheat sheets and guides for assemblies, beginner tips, sketching, keyboard shortcuts. I continue to add to this. It is free. All you have to do is click the link below. One thing we haven't talked about yet is embossing something that's not consistently round. So when you think about this cylinder, this is a consistent diameter or consistent radius. This bottle is inconsistent. It's changing all throughout. But I want to apply an emboss anyways. This is functionality that was actually added you know, roughly two years ago, where before we couldn't do complex shapes like this bottle. 
So let's try it. We're going to do the emboss and I'm going to do a couple of these and we're going to add material two millimeters and you can see it wraps around, which is so cool, but keep in mind it is completely distorting these. And as I continue to add more sketch profiles, eventually, if it's not able to solve them, it goes all the way around. But if I try this one, it stops. So I get an error. As soon as you exceed its ability to solve it, you're going to get that error. So just click that and toggle it off instead. Once I have the selections I want, I'll click OK, and then it solves it. So this is a great example to me of where the emboss is an aesthetic feature. It's not meant to be for precision. It's not meant to be for your mechanical designs. So use Extrude Cut when you need more of that mechanical design and precise fit. And the emboss is great to make things look a little bit better. I hope this helps. I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video.